Welcome to the Aotearoa Rugby Pod once again. A really big weekend of Super Rugby coming up. We've caught some heat, actually, from a few fans <laughs> calling us the Crusaders Rugby Pod. So we're going to try to, you know, show that we do have love for the Hurricanes because obviously there's some Hurricanes fans out there who want, want a little bit more about their team within this show. And we'll try to do our very best for you on that. We've got a big piece of Stephen Pettifetta first five analysis. Chippers getting flash on us this week as well. The Opiki final is going to be massive. The Blues sneak home into top spot. Maratu knock over the Manawa. Blues at home versus the Manawa in the final this weekend. So that's big. A little bit on how you can watch that final on TikTok as well. We'll have your email comments, your YouTube comments, of course, the person who gets the best comment will get to play a sport ball as well. So that to go in the tipping comp before we get any further. James Parsons. How are you? Very well, very well. Excited about a weekend. Of I'm tonight. just fascinated that I've been associated with being a Crusaders uh, podcast fan. <laughs> <laughs> Bryn, you must be just pumping them up too much, mate. I've... I've been spending so much time on Dupla C Carifi or Safa Amour, mate. You've got to give those canes a bit of love, mate. Well, I don't know how much more love I can give them. I told them they'd be the dark horse to win the competition. That's so. true. <laughs> That's true. What more they want? I don't know what more they want from me. Oh, yeah. It's difficult, though, isn't it? You can't please everyone. There's no. all these different 80 teams. 20 rule. Yeah, and, and the Crusaders, to be fair, I mean, if the All Blacks were suddenly 0 and 5, we'd be having the similar conversations week on week. We're talking about the greatest team in the history of Super Rugby, possibly the greatest provincial slash club team to ever play the game. So I apologise oh, if we focus on that. It's going to get more heat. <laughs> the Irish fans and South African bring, fans Bring your arguments. In. Bring your arguments. I'm willing to have them. <laughs> so, but the Hurricanes have been very good and we'll look to do a little bit more on the Hurricanes today. So let's start there, actually, with the viewer question that inspired the intro in that conversation. <laughs> um, very big thank you to Kerry Getson who sent us an email. Uh, perhaps you may consider a name change for the program to Crusaders Rugby Pod. Shouldn't you be focusing on them as what they are doing right now and what they're doing to everyone should be of interest? The same applies to the Chiefs and the Blues as well. So please do better you lose my interest. <laughs> so, <laughs> my question uh, goes, let's start with you, Jipper. Yeah. What makes the Canes so good this year? Um, well, I think we've touched on it in parts, and I'm not being facetious there. I genuinely do think we've touched on it. But they've been so good, you can't labour a point. <laughs> you know, like they've been consistent. Their, big, their biggest change, I believe, is their type five. You know, their, their set piece, um, scrum and line out. We see any team that can't function there, um, you know, is, is, is their biggest change, I believe. On top of that, the breakdown is where the game is won and lost. That loose forward trio, how do you pick it every week? You know, like, it, it, it is the best crop of Lucy's in terms of squad depth mm. um, across the campaign, across New Zealand and Australia and, and Fiji. Um, and then out the back of that, they have got, I suppose, an, an innate ability to put teams under pressure through the defensive line. And it forces a lot of errors and turnovers and they're extremely good off those turnovers. So when they put that line speed pressure, and they're quite short on D, they do leave the outside a hell of a lot. And, and they're not worried about that. They back themselves to cover that or if there's a kick, they've got time to get back there. But they just, like Corey Jane's been running it for a long time. He did himself as a player. Their wingers are high, real high. And, and they, they just bring that pressure and then it forces them to go back inside. Then they've got that forward pack I just mentioned, one to eight to clean them up, and then they're brutal in that collision area and that breakdown, and they just, teams can't get past, they can't get a roll on. The way attacks need to get a roll on is get in behind that defensive line. They just currently just can't do that. And I do think their defence is their biggest weapon. Their attack, they've always been good at. Mm. I don't think they've ever struggled attack wise. You've got Geordie Barrett there, I think. Consistency of Brett Cameron. You know, when Aidan Morgan got his crack, he was great. Um, so I, I, I liken the three areas for me is obviously the type five, the breakdown work with their Lucy's and the defensive system. The biggest thing that I've been impressed with has been actually been our Safa Moore's leadership in and around decision making in big moments. Look, you know, sometimes you can take the three points and get a, an easy out. But I think in, in big games and derby games, you know, they, they've had that no nonsense approach in that forward pack, going to line out malls, going to scrum, especially I remember in Christchurch against Crusaders very early on, going for a scrum and then scoring points off that. So I think all those points that, you know, Jip's touched on, I, I completely agree with that. I think the challenge for them is they've obviously lost Cam Roygaard 
who's been a big, big part of that in and around how wide they've played so well. Yes, TJ Pedernal is back, and it's going to be great to see, I guess, the evolution of what that Hurricane side's going to look like. Is it going to look the same? Will it be a little bit off? I think it'll be pretty pretty similar to the way they do play, and they'll continue to have that momentum. But I guess the challenge is for them is, you know, you want to be peaking towards the final. They have, you know, they're, they started at a very high level. The challenge is, the, is for them to come to the final time. So can they do it? And the one thing that I think that they can do it is the depth that they do have. You look at that Rebels result, they had 14 changes, nothing changed, and you're going to have that competitiveness throughout the throughout the year. And when you come to the finals time, you're not going to be able to choose because your, your group is humming and competitive and wanting to be on the field. So, yeah, it's it's it's, it's very, very good. A good place to be in Hurricanes headquarters at the moment. You talk about that spine around decision making, but when you can have Amor on the field, a, a Karifi, yep. a Brad Shields, a Geordie Barrett, you know, even your Billy Proctors, um, it's, it's pretty professional. And now you add TJ... Pitanara in that mix as a leader and let's not forget when he did that injury like he was in the ABs and he was playing really well and 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 off the back of that Rebels performance whew, it was honestly it was like 2016 all the old dogs were stepping up Brad Shields was huge in that game TJ Geordie it's um yeah I think it's a really exciting time for them if you're going to have a person replacing Cameron Regard Oh. I mean, TJ Pedernado for a decade has been that archetypical... Is that, a, is that the right word? I don't know if that's the right word. It's a word. It's a um, word. <laughs> <laughs> the running halfback who can also play in other ways and mm. is a great defender fits that system. Fits it massively. And as Bryn said, like, all their players are brought into their system because it looked no different, 14 changes. Um, and the one thing yeah. about TJ, man, he is just, I'd say it time and time again, I've never met a bloke that is more competitive. Maybe him and Rico Ioane are probably on, on even pecking order. Like, everything is, like, to the bus. How fast you can put rubbish away. I, I don't know. <laughs> Anything they are going to compete on and, and they go a hundy at it. So... Um, yeah, I just think, and I think he's motivated. Yeah. Like when he gets that bit between yeah. his teeth and he's motivated, he wants to, you know, a lot of people have written him off, he'll, he'll, be, he'll be mindful of that and he'll want to make a statement. Uh, are they winning those games uh, cleaning up and stuff though? I mean, they're competitive, <laughs> but are they winning the game? It's a very even split and, and they're both very loud. Well, when <laughs> I was around them, they're both very loud that you knew who won, put it that way. Yeah. You very <laughs> and much, if they lost? <laughs> uh, there was just, they were pretty much straight back up wanting to, to do it again. Challenge something else. <laughs> we'll but, keep on playing until yeah, I win. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you must have had a few games like that. The uh, Crusaders, a few guys who are ultra competitive. Oh, 100%. Look, I think just hearing the stories with, with TJ, yeah, he's um, yeah, one of the better competitors, I think, in not just New Zealand, but world rugby with everything, and I guess his mindset when it comes to everything in life. So definitely saw that firsthand on the field. But I think well, he was pretty competitive. I think that guy sitting next to you on the left there <laughs> um, was pretty good in that space. I think he would have, you know, well, I don't think it was all, not all the time, but when he was on, uh, you didn't really want to <laughs> get in a bad, bad way when it came to Big Jiffer. So he's right up there, the big I've, fella on the left. I've simmered down in retirement. Yeah. And having a daughter. <laughs> having you know, a daughter, yeah. Having yeah, to really yeah, take, yeah. really sort of... What do you call it? Sand the rough edges off? Yeah, that's right. A few less golf clubs wrapped around the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just given up golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is not a sport that is going to calm you down. No. There's no. no way. No way at all. OK, so I've got another question in relation to the Hurricanes because we've been bombarded and, you know, we've got to give you what you want. Michael Williams via email. Based on previous history, we often find that the informed Super Rugby team tends to have more players picked for the ABs. Who do you think gets picked for the ABs from the Hurricanes based on current form? What do you think, Bryn? Guys like Ruben Love, he's an easy pick. I think for the form that he's had, um, you've obviously got that loose four trio. Not too sure what raises mix and what he's wanting, but you know, there's probably three or four guys there that you have to be think would be in the conversation to be in that loose four trio. I think within their tight five, look, you've got, you know, you've got Namia, who's played really well. You've got Safa Moore, who we think is probably going to be in, in that mix. Um, you could probably go, you know, Isaiah walker Leah Weddy. He's in that conversation with how he's played in the first, you know, part of the competition. And so, and then you've got the incumbents of like a Geordie Barrett and, um, and, and that. So, yeah, oh, there's a lot. There's a lot that, that, that could make the team. Um, I can't really po probably pinpoint right now who I think is going to be, um, you know, in the mix when it comes to the team naming, but... You know, those guys that I've named and, you know, probably Jim will come over the top with who else he thinks, but there's a lot of them putting their hands up for higher honours this year. Yeah, there's a little bit of a dark horse for me. I think there's the, the, the natural ones you'll lean towards. I think the hard one, before I get onto my dark horse, is 
Tarifi, Lakai, Harmon. You know, like there is, there's quite a battle going on. Uh, Christy, he was in the um, All Blacks 15 as well. You sort of know Dalton's going to be there. Um, you know, even to a point, Callum Boucher's in the mix. So I do find that's quite a hard selection, that, that squad member yeah. seven. Um, so do they go for an out and out seven? Does Ethan Blacker to come back into the mix that he can cover seven and so forth? So that's an interesting one, but I think both Lakai and Karifi are definitely in the conversation for a spot. And then I, I've really liked the work of Caleb Delaney in the second row at lock. Mm. Liking him a little bit to like a Tom Franklin, you know, like he, he gets through his core roles really well. He's a really strong carrier. He's busy, constantly topping the, the stats for them in the middle, in the tough carries, tough tackles, um, and, he, and he's got a bit of flair about him. So, um, you know, he's, he's one to watch, I think, um, in that second row. And, and he may look a little bit smaller, but man, he, he gets through his, his work. Um, with, with physical ease by the looks. And I know international's a step up, but, yeah, he's impressed me. Well, when you look at the locking stocks around the place, how many uh, are probably shoe and how many will remain in the squad, what chances do you, do you see him legitimately of getting a spot there? Yeah. Um, when you think of Lord, Tupovai, uh, Barrett, Tupolotu, it's going to be challenging. Mm. Um, because they've, they've already invested in those guys in the black jersey, but, man, form can't be ignored. And I think it's a new coaching group, um, the, a new four-year cycle. You know, age may come into it, and he's a young man, and um, an opportunity may be given. Or, um, you know, Walker Leoweri has been in the All Blacks 15, so he's, he's an option, Cam Sui Fua. Um, but I just, I, I really like the way Delaney's going about his work, and he definitely warrants All Black 15 selection for me. And it's probably been a question that's been um, answered a lot in probably the past around their tight five. And when it gets tough, for example, when you go down to Christchurch in a, in a quarterfinal when it's wet, you know, doing the hard stuff like Caleb Delaney and doing all the grunt work, um, you know, they're, they're doing that. So the challenge is, is, you know, you're picking up wins and hopefully they can get a home final or a home semi final against a team, you know, like a Blues or a, or a Chiefs or, you know, whoever it may be, a Brumbies or whatever. It's probably that's probably the probably a little bit of an Achilles heel the last two years. They've had to go to Canberra and they haven't had that ability to be at home. So they'll be a different team at home. It's just been able to continue the, the success they've had and um, continue to keep chipping away and see what happens when it comes to the back end of the year. Sure as hell don't want to go to Canberra the way the Brumbies are playing right now. Uh, but when you look at that table, the Blues on 27, admittedly game in hand, the Hurricanes unbeaten on 27, Brumbies on 27, the Chiefs back on 23. And you consider the Hurricanes are hosting the Chiefs this weekend. The Chiefs obviously put a huge score on Moana Pacifica. Do the Chiefs have what it takes to end this run from the Canes? Oh, I think you'd be silly to think they don't with the calibre of player um, they have. And the way they can sort of light a game up, their biggest challenge is coming in and out of games. Like, they can score 28 points within 10, 15 minutes and then they drop off and let a team sort of creep back in. Mm. They obviously did them against Moana Pacifica, but you sort of saw that against the Highlanders. They wouldn't want that performance, um, I, don't, I don't believe. And then obviously the, after the Crusaders game, mm. you know, maybe question marks um, sort of come. But I think there was that stat, not to say that, you know, I thought Josh Shaken was great and the Crusader game you can put to the side, but I think there's some ridiculous stat that Damian Kenzie, when he's on the field, they're like 170 points for and, you know, 50 or 60 against, and then when he's not there, it's like 10 mm. points for and 50 or 60 against or whatever. So he is a key cog, and if he's there, it's a game changer. It's, it's, um, it's sort of like when the Blues went down there. You know, you, you sort of didn't know who was going to win. Most people lent to the Blues. I think on this occasion, everyone will be leaning more to the Hurricanes, but I don't know. Chiefs, Chiefs manner, um, backs against the wall, no one expecting them to win. We've seen them do it in Christchurch time and time again, go down there, no one gives them the chance. So, And Clayton sort of said there's been a few questions had to be said inside after that Crusaders game, and they definitely answered against Moana Pacifica, didn't they?